It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. For this video, I'm gonna read at least three different manifestos for Black Lives Matter. In my previous videos, I talked about the history of Black Lives Matter, the various stuff they're doing right now, and I think it's very important to actually know about the belief system and the list of demands that they have for these particular groups for Black Lives Matter. So without further hesitation, let's read the manifestos. White people, here are 10 requests from a Black Lives Matter leader. Number one, white people, if you don't have any descendants, you're probably to a black or brown family, preferably one that lives in generational poverty. So basically, if you're white, you have to give your house to a black person, and I'm pretty sure this would not actually go down pretty badly in this country and actually increase racial tensions. White people, if you're inheriting property you tend to sell upon acceptance, give it to a brown or black family. You're bound to make that money in some other white privileged way. Maybe it's me, but I will not sell anything just because, you know, somebody is black. The main reason I want to sell something to that person is to actually, you know, if they have the money to actually purchase the property or not, regardless of the skin color. I want to think, you know, hey, that person is black, so therefore, I will sell that property. No, no, that does not work that way. If you have money, I will sell you the property, not because of your skin color. Number three, if you're a developer or owner of multifamily housing, build a sustainable complex in a black or brown branded neighborhood, and let brown and black people live in it for free. No, not for free. Not for free. If I was that person who want to get that complex, that multi big house, I want to actually work to get that house. You see, I want to have self determination of my destiny, and if I can actually afford a place, I want to actually want to use the money towards that building so I can live in it, not get it for free. That's just ridiculous. That's not actually reasonable to me. Number four, white people. If you can afford to downsize, give up the house you own to a black or brown family, preferably a family for generational poverty. Maybe I'm getting deja vu, but I thought that was already said before, but uh, let's continue. Number five, white people. If any of the people you intend to leave your property are racist assholes, change the will and will to your property to a black or brown family, preferably a family from generational poverty. Number six, white people, rebudget your monthly so you can donate to black funds for land purchasing. There seems to be a constant theme with this whole entire list. Free, 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 free. Oh, this here is free, or this here is free. Free, 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 free. But honestly, nothing in life is free, honestly. Because if you really think about it, do you honestly think that public education is free? Because I can tell you right now, it's paid by taxes, and everything else that we take for granted is not free. Of course, we use taxes for, like, you know, hospitals. We use the taxes for, like, emergency services, like police and stuff. And so, nothing in life is free. So, why are you going to give stuff for free just because they're black? That seems like a bit of hypocrisy and also bigotry and low expectations to me. White people especially white women, get a racist fire. You don't know what the fuck they're be saying. You're complicit when you ignore them. Get your boss fired because they're racist too. What if a person said a comment that was like off color and it was not really racist, but you interpret it as racist and therefore you call somebody a racist to get them fired? That could be also a scenario. Now there's no denying that there's actually racists out there that might, of course, say stuff that's really, really awful. But at the same time, we live in a culture where basically anything could be racist. And so, if someone calls someone else racist and they're not really a racist, then I don't think it's a really good strategy on your end. Number eight, backing up number seven, this should be easy, but those shirtless clans, Nazis, and other ill-dick white men 
will all be returning to work. Get their ass fired. Call the police even. They look suspicious. Number nine. Okay, back in number eight. If any white person at your job or as you enter in spaces and you overhear a white person praising the actions from yesterday, first get a pick, get their name and more information. Hell, find out where they work, get them fired. But certainly address them, and if you need to, you got hands, use them. Oh my god, ugh. So, if someone is a suspicious racist, you have to dox them and freaking get them fired? just because you suspect them to be racist. This is just horrible. This is like the most horrible thing ever. Like, even if somebody was a piece of trash, I would never, ever dox them just because of wrong thing. That is just horrible. Number 10, commit to two things. Fighting white supremacy where and how you can. This doesn't mean taking up knitting unless you're making scarves for black and brown kids and need it and funding black and brown people in their work. This is the first manifesto I found and there's like two more for this. Two more! You know, when I started to record this video, I should have brought like a drink or something because I cannot go to this whole entire list silver because all these demands so far have been absolute torture to read. This comes directly from Campaign Zero, which has like a lot of Black Lives Matter leaders working together for that list. Number one, and broken windows policing. Number two, community oversights. Number three, limit of force. Number four, independently investigate and persecute. Number five, community representation. Number six, body cams and filmed police. Number seven, training. Number eight, and for profit policing. Number nine, demilitarization. And number 10, fair police union contracts. This list in comparison to the last list is more reasonable. Then again, it does not take a rocket scientist to make a list that's better than the last list I just read for you guys. But uh, the only kind of complaint that I have for this list is community representation. Mostly because I believe in equality of opportunities and not equality of outcomes. And to me, what matters the most if a person is actually qualified for the job or not. I don't believe in quotas. And every single time I see stories about people trying to hire people because they're black or whatever, it's just sad because you're actually gonna remove agency and their hard work to actually get that position. So to me at least, the most important thing is not the skin color or orientation or gender. What's most important for me at least is actually if you're good for the job or not. Black Lives Matter releases policy agenda. The six platform demands are, number one, end the war on black people. Number two, reparations for past and continuing harms. Number three, divestment from the institute that criminalize, cage, and harm black people, and investment in education, health, and safety of black people. Number four, economic justice for all, and a reconstruction of the economy to ensure our communities have collective ownership, not merely access. Number five, community control of the laws, institutions, and policies that impact us. I can't say that I 100% agree with this list either. Because for starters, I do not believe in the concept of reparations for black people today. Because in the past, of course, there was slavery, and there was also, of course, like Jim Crow. Like, no black people alive to this very day have ever experienced slavery. And matter of fact, the whole entire Civil War was already paid through the Civil War. So, it does not make any sense to me to get money for something that I was not a part of. It would make a lot more sense back then if black people who were slaves were actually got the money. However, no black person alive today is actually, of course, have experienced slavery. As far as, like, equality for all for economics, I'm not sure about that either. Because the whole entire proposal sounds particularly ludicrous. Again, 
I'm absolutely terrible at economics, and so that's the main reason why I have zero videos just talking about economics. But the whole proposal to me sounds ridiculous because to have economic equality for all is just impossible because different businesses across like the country have different wages for people and so it's impossible to pay everybody the exact amount of hours and also work ethic because sometimes people have different schedules, they work different days, different hours and so economic equality for all is just literally impossible. But anyway, those are the manifestos that I read for you guys for Black Lives Matter. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I won't <laughs> trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.